Now, obviously, you're doing the most when you're a registered professional engineer with the Engineering Council of South Africa. Sounds super fancy, right? Here to tell us more about a day in the life of an electrical engineer, let's welcome Humozo Sitapilo. Good morning. Uh, my name is Homozo um, Sitlapelo. Uh, PRN SMSAIEE. <laughs> Professional engineer, senior member of the South African Institute of Electrical Engineers. We like to give ourselves titles to seem important. Maybe because we are. But yeah, I am a chief engineer responsible for telecommunications um, in ESCOM transmission. I also happen to be Deputy Chairperson of the South African Institute of Electrical Engineers, Gauteng Center. I'm a husband, a father, a returning marathoner, and an ultra marathoner. I know it doesn't look like it, but yeah, uh, returning being the key word. And I also happen to be a bedroom DJ, because DJing involves electrical engineering equipment. We'll speak briefly about all of these things in the next few slides. So I happen to specialize in microwave radio frequency transmission <clears throat> uh, network design uh, for this power utility that I mentioned in the previous slide. So we are responsible essentially for all the telecommunications infrastructure that this power utility has. So if they need to switch off remotely, the infrastructure that allows for the switching off remotely is designed, built, engineered by us. So we essentially give the system operator who manages the whole power system eyes and an ability to control the network. So in essence, my, from, from a typical day looking at microwave radio transmission, uh, you would need to know about antenna designs and uh, frequency, radio frequency management to ensure that there's no interference. Uh, you would need to know about um, how, this, how to transmit wirelessly over the air how to allow for multiple users over the same limited radio frequency spectrum and managing that. Uh, you would work in a multidisciplinary team uh, to ensure that the network that you engineer, the sites that you choose for, for, for various antennas, towers, and so on are, again, within, uh, are, are reasonably affordable within the budget that you work in. You comply to various environmental, uh, you adhere to various environmental requirements, um, and yeah, you work in a multidisciplinary team. So a typical day then would be if a project comes in, you will check for its engineering, uh, whether it complies to engineering standards, whether it complies to environmental standards, whether it's affordable for both the country and for yourself as a company. The second aspect of, of a, 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 a telecoms engineer uh, would be then to use fiber optic networks. We all, if you are on your, at home, Wi-Fi, there is highly likely that your backhaul is over fiber. So from a power utility perspective, we don't plant poles or dig the roads as you would see in, I guess, in, in your communities. We use fiber optic cable over the, the power lines, either using it as a as an earth wire or stringing it below a power line. So essentially then for this type of um, comms medium, one also then needs to know about coding on how you would essentially do, um, how you would modulate a, a light or laser to ensure that information is carried across that particular fiber optic cable or fiber optic, uh, uh, well, over the fiber, the glass. Essentially as well, one of the coolest things that we would, would have working as an electrical engineer in a power utility is uh, what well, cool and also exciting <laughs> is the maintenance there of, uh, of, of power lines. Uh, there in the picture, you would see uh, maintenance being carried out live line. So, you know, about what? Minimum of 134 kilovolts uh, over the power line, but maintenance being done when the power line is, is, is actually live. So that's one of the exciting things that one can also be able to participate in 
as an electrical engineer. I, as mentioned, I am a deputy chair of the South African Institute of Electrical Engineers Gauteng Center. Essentially what the SAIE does is to looking at providing technology leadership within the country. We discuss industry issues that affect electrical engineering. Uh, we interact with government. We essentially try and get and, and make electrical engineering interesting to um, to upcoming students, we offer bursary schemes, we give input into the Engineering Council of South Africa's operations. The Engineering Council of South Africa's president happens to be a, a, the first woman president who is a member of the SAIE and an electrical engineer herself. There are various outreach projects that I'll touch on that we, 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 we do. So essentially what we do is try to make an, a tangible impact to both industry and society. And for our membership, we also do the same where we try to network, we recognize uh, great work that our members do. Um, yeah, so we try to also make a tangible difference to them. So in various outreach projects that one would get involved in is going around high schools, trying to get as many students to be interested in mathematics and science uh, as possible, and hopefully then to take a career in electrical engineering. Um, we also have we mentor students in, in uh, universities, universities of technologies, TVET colleges. Uh, they, we've held an Africa Bot uh, competition sponsored uh, with UJ, where university students and high school students actually then get a maze and a robot to, to see who, which team would have the, uh, whose robot would actually go through a maze in the, in, in the, fastest, poss in the fastest possible time. Uh, other outreaches include we've been to YOTV uh, and, and we are judges at the annual Ex ESCOM Expo. Knowledge leadership. Um, I think what the, in, this slide is very interesting in that we try to engage with government um, and, and provide knowledge leadership and try to engage and try to get them to you know, uh, have a systematic view of policy making. Professor Marala is, is, was here, I think, opening TechnoX this year. He's also an electrical engineer by profession. Professor Atha Mutambara, who happens to be a, a former president or former deputy president of Zimbabwe, is, a, is, a, is an electrical engineer as well by profession. Uh, we've engaged with various ministers, um, including the minister or the past minister of, of science and technology, uh, Mamalu Kubai, as well as Praveen Gordhan. You would know that if you don't, the president of China is an engineer by profession and his uh, pre president Xi Jinping and his cabinet is also mostly constituted of engineers. So it's important to have that systematic view of the world uh, through engineering. And we, we try as often as possible to try and engage and provide guidance to government if they accept it as well. <laughs> um, we have fun too. Um, as I said, we recognize our peers for doing great work. We dress up uh, once in a while and, and, and have fun. Um, we also happen to play <laughs> music, as, as I mentioned, as an aspirant uh, bedroom DJ. It's important to learn uh, to mix and, and, and use turntables. If you are an electronic engineer, if you've gone through varsity, one of the key requirements would be that you need to learn to design and build a mixer and an amplifier. And once you do that, you have fun uh, playing with that. Um, we recognize our peers. What's the point of, of, of being uh, or knowing how to put a broadcast system like the AV system that's here when you don't, you know, if you don't get to then have fresh moments and, and participate with the users of, of the technologies that you build. And lastly, a typical day after a long run would then be to light up a fire and enjoy time with your family. So thank you for listening. My name is Homotus Tapello. I'm, I'm an electrical engineer. Thank you.